Hello. It's a lot of wind. I don't know whether uh, you, you can hear me, but uh, I want to show you one airplane here um, that uh, here at the Pima Aerospace Museum, and that is the Peacemaker B36. So you see, it's a prop, but that's not the entire truth because that airplane also has jet. So let me go and take you around on that. Sorry, I, there's going to be a lot of noise. that by two this is just one wing then we'll find our returning two burning four to six burning four burning um, but they were not uh, particularly reliable those uh, huge props the roots were actually the engines so these engines were a 4360 America's first long-range nuclear bomber and you have here the city of Fort Worth that's its name uh, and it's one of just three uh, intact surviving um, B-36s so this one here is at the Pima Air and Space Museum however this one uh, was not taken from the junkyard the boneyard that's right here but this one was actually uh, brought here in pieces and reassembled um, because that this was actually at Carswell Air Force Base in Texas and that was restored by volunteers. Um, however, um, they couldn't get the funding to get it all completed. Um, so the Air Force took, re took possession of this aircraft again and then gave that here to the Pima Air and Space Museum. Um, one of the nicknames, there's multiple uh, Nick's names for this. Uh, one is Magnesium Overcast. Um, this is made from um, um, a uh, alloy uh, with um, lots of mag magnesium in it. So when this thing caught fire, and a few did, then it uh, burned very quickly. Um, also, what you can see from the front here, now we're taking a look at the front of those engines, is uh, configuration we don't see on a lot of prop planes this is a pusher configuration so this is actually pushing the air um, uh, the airflow it's pushing kind of the airflow. but usually it's a tractor configuration where it's effectively pulling the aircraft forward so you have this um, pusher configuration here so you'll see the air intakes there and so these um, engines, these uh, Pratt & Whitney 3630 engines, were actually not built for this configuration. So they had uh, very many problems. The engine was built to be hosted exactly the other way around. So the airflow now to the, the back of the engine was bitter cold from uh, the high altitude uh, freezing temperatures and that caused the engines to freeze up in the wrong places and uh, that caused a lot of outages. So here you see the other side of this airplane and the other engines. So uh, we've seen effectively all six, all ten of them. And so the joke was, uh, not that the proud way of saying this was uh, six turning, four burning, but uh, the somewhat negative term that was probably more hit the truth more was um, two turning, two burning, two smoking, two joking, and two unaccounted for. So from the ground, this is a big airplane. Um, it's about 70 meters wingspan, so it's fairly massive. It's the biggest prop airplane um, that uh, the U US military ever used. And it's also um, the biggest, uh, outside of the uh, C-5 transport, the biggest wingspan of any airplane that the U.S. Air Force ever had in its inventory. So, that's the back side of it. There's another 
shirts and let's go and take a, go a little walk. The mission of this one, of this uh, airplane, was kind of defined when it was ordered. Um, it was ordered in 1941, and in 1941, uh, Germans uh, were. Uh, Raiding all over Europe, but the Americans were not in the war yet. Not an impartial party helping um, Great Britain uh, with a lot of support, um, but uh, it wasn't clear that the Germans. It was uh, like the Germans were actually the battle was not going to fall. And um, so there had to be an answer. What if Britain had been taken? Because then the US had reason. By the Germans, so they needed a plane which uh, was suitable for long-distance bombing raids on Germany. So that also explains its range. It has a range of 5,000 miles, uh, sorry, 10,000 miles, uh, which uh, is uh, sufficient to get from the U.S. to Germany and back in one flight. So it is fairly massive, as you can tell. Wings. As uh, the Second World War was over, because of that order, and when the relationships with Russia soured, and the nuclear bomb was there, um, it was then possible for the um, uh, U.S. Air Force, as this came online in 1949, to kind of um, redesignate this as their first strategic bomber, and this had the uh, capability to get unrefueled into the Soviet Union. But not back, so we'd have to land at a remote base, but on friendly territory, if that would have been possible. And that this airplane had a capability that, in, certainly in these air early years, the Russians didn't have. So what I'm showing you here is the two humongous bomb bays. So the bomb base starts here. If I walk along. Right. This is where the first bomb bay ends and that's where the second one starts so that goes all the way to the back here and so each of these bomb bays was big enough to carry one nuclear bomb so these nuclear bombs uh, specifically the ones that uh, were built very early um, were really that large and there's some of the casings uh, exhibited at the museum in Dayton, Ohio, where uh, one of the other three survivors sits. Um, but this one here is actually very beautifully restored, um, wonderful colors, great fresh, as you can tell, it's actually relatively freshly rebuilt. So that much to the B-36 and uh, we're going to look at some more.